Hey, superstars, welcome back to another episode of Word Up with Danny Katz. Today, I am joined once again by Remington Donovan. Remington is a master numerologist, a mystic, an author, a spiritual teacher. He has a really bumpin' Patreon membership community, and he also has a new book coming out this month, Prosperity Practices. Remington definitely tops my lists of favorite guests, favorite conversations that I get to have with really cool people. This one was no exception. We go deep on astrology on the impending Saturn move into out of Aquarius into Pisces, Pluto into Aquarius. We talk about symbols, inversions, uh, fuckery, mind control, all the fun things, Los Angeles, black magic, anyway. Um, as always, the show is divided in half. So the first half of our show is absolutely free for public consumption. The second half is available for paid supporters on my locals and Patreon communities, where for as little as $5 a month, you get access to all of my second half conversations, oodles of bonus content, drop-ins with me, et cetera, et cetera. Before we dive into the episode today, thank you for clicking the subscribe button. Uh, for remembering to like, to share, to comment. Your best bet is to sign up for my newsletter at dannycats.com. I think that does it for housekeeping. Buckle up and prepare to enjoy my conversation with Remington Donovan. you definitely want to talk about you're super lit up about you're most passionate about right now in any no-go places i.e was guru jagat murdered uh <laughs> i'm gonna probably say no but it all seems very weird and um you know i talked to her my last conversation with her was she was in the hospital and she was calling about, like, I had left her a message when we found out that uh, we were having a boy. Um, I let her know. And then it was like a few days until I heard back, which, you know, she's traveling. But that's especially when it came to this, the kid, like, she got always would get back to me that day. Like, and I was like, all right, maybe she didn't get it or she's traveling, whatever. I didn't overthink it. And then I get this voice memo she's super excited about the boy and um she's like we're doing a huge you know 120 day is a big for our spiritual tradition that's the day we believe the soul enters the body so that's a really important day and we really honor that we honor the, the mother um so she was like we're gonna have a huge bash at rama and then she messaged back and just sharing how she was in the ICU or she had just been in the ICU. She's in the hospital to send prayers. It was a close call. I mean, it's all crazy and weird and strange, all from like surgery and an ankle injury. Right. In an LA hospital. You know, I, I sort of assume you would have some of the best and the best, you know, around. It's Los right. Angeles. I mean, it's so weird. She did call me right after she fell though she was in germany and um just sharing some concerns some energies that she had felt you know and sort of basically expressing it felt as if something almost pushed her like a build up you know not like a, not a human right and uh i did this read for her and at the time uh, one of the cards that came was the priestess, the high priestess, which my my immediate uh, intuition on it uh, was that it was some process of an initiation because she was asking about some other things and like vice news and some of these stupid um, quote, uh, these like lamestream media, like they're so desperate for content, like and the uh, you have a cult narrative is like really hot, you know, I survived, I survived a cult. Um, like I'm a, I was a Costco member, you know, now like that was the cult I was in and I had to keep shopping there. <laughs> they told me what I could buy. Um, 
it, it was about that, but I, I had this intuitive hit on this high priestess card. And I was like, this is, and I had just framed it saying, well, this is going to just wind up being an elevation and initiation. Right. And, you know, it, and there was a lot of shitty cards. It was going to suck, but also it's just going to take everything to another level for you. And then right before she died, I pulled, while she was in the hospital, I, I pulled a card, not like predicting, just, I just pulled a card and I got the high priestess. And then Gina, my wife, decided to pull a card. She got the priestess. And it's like at that moment, I didn't say it, but I just knew like she was going to transition, but I couldn't, my logic mind absolutely wouldn't believe it and wouldn't accept it. It seemed too, too insane. It just seemed too crazy, especially after talking to her, you know, in Berlin, right after the, the accident. And she was just concerned. I mean, she sounded heavy, but also she was probably in pain, but that card coming up like that three times like I even when I first picked it it's like I knew I didn't know that I knew and as as much as I consider myself a really good reader that was too heavy and too intense I'm just there's no way my ego wouldn't you know think that but that second time and then I remember that night uh, I was trying to get a hold of Tej everyone was trying to get a hold of Tej uh, like email and they're like you have her number can you call her she finally got back to me she was having dinner at, you know Taze, right yeah. well she just it was like 9 30 and she just said I we might lose Guru Jugget this in this earthly realm and I was like Taze, that that is just that can't be and she's like I know but I could hear it in her voice and she's profoundly intuitive. She just sinks into something beyond what a read, any reader will do. Yeah. It's just, and there's no way any of us wanted to believe it. And she was on the way to the hospital. And then it was like later, it, it was like, I guess the next day or the morning, I, I forget the time, but it was all like a weird shot. It was all weird. Yeah. And uh, so it, I mean, it feels like one of those things that wasn't supposed to happen. And then like, I'm conflicted because for the most part, I feel like your time's your time. Right. Right. And as much as I think that we have choice and free will and we, we do our best to like work on our destinies, which is a choice, I think. And we, I don't believe that we're living by fate. I mean, there's also some things that probably are most sort of set and the amount of breaths that can be one of them I don't it's it's odd I mean I don't know what to say but after her saying she just felt this like weird push it feels like a, a weird energetic setup yeah I agree I I mean I wasn't in in touch with her so close to the end in the way you were but my initial gut reaction was like, oh, the dark side took her out. And a number of other like tapped in women reached out and there were like, what? Everyone's question was like, was she taken out? And when you look at like the ridiculous, you know, podcasts and Instagram accounts set up to harass her, it just felt like an odd amount of pushback for one human being. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree, Danny. Look, Danny, it's like, is very odd because it's not like oh let's lock people up like people are creating a narrative like oh i went to a yoga studio and then i was part of a cult like it's a fucking yoga studio in la like sign you know what like i don't share as i was in like a legit what people would consider to be like a cult and like hidden secret magical societies you don't just like come and go you don't just like oh yeah you know what i don't feel like taking you know a yoga class today so I, it, it's such a pathetic narrative to me. I yeah. mean, sure, some people might be, who knows, maybe a pain to work for or whatever, but it's all like your choice. Like, I think like these people need to get a job probably in like journalism or go work on set in Hollywood and tell me how like warm and fuzzy that is. You know, like, and I don't have a ton of set experience, but I'm certainly, and you're an XLA, like, we all have friends that have been in that industry for a long time. 
it's fucking stressful. People get yelled at. There's like, everybody's under the gun. It's work. No big deal. Go work in a restaurant. Right. It's, it's odd. This, like, it's such thin skinned and people, because they don't like the way they were spoken to, or, I mean, it just seems so much of it is the fame thing, right? Like no one's complaining about being a cult when that person doesn't have a lot of media attention, but there's like no, um, right, totally. there's no acknowledgement of personal responsibility in this. Like it, and I, I hear it, you know, I, I heard it with Patabi Joyce and, you know, with all of the yoga teachers and all of the famous people. And it's like, you have legs, get up and leave. Like you don't, you don't have to be participating in this if you don't like it. Yeah. And then to dedicate your life, like being, say, you know, I was into something like, imagine, like I was really into playing cricket and then I decided I didn't like cricket. I'm not going to like dedicate my life. In real life world example. I took Tai Chi for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I didn't really love it. And I, kept, I felt, I was like, I'm going to fulfill the classes that I signed up for. Right. That was my choice. And I didn't like it and I still kept going, right? And um, I, I'm not dedicating my life to being like anti-Tai Chi. Right. Right, like I didn't, I thought my teacher was sort of dorky, probably ate too much brown rice, he was kind of passive. Did I learn a couple of things on maneuvering and shifting weight? Yeah, it's just not my thing. Right. Like, like nobody has to do anything. Right. And people are like dedicating their lives to tell people what they can and can't do. And what was amazing to me too, is this like movement that came about. It's like the dark energy is the way I see it. It's just some big collaborative, weird, diabolical miracles, dark energy. Because it's so interesting. It just happened to all line up the same time that COVID. Now there's right before there's like the anti-cult narrative, not just like that stuff. I mean, so that's just such a, a hot topic now um it's a way to get like clickbait but um it to me just feels like it still has been this anti anything that allows you to like tune into your infinite self completely and um big fucking deal and then the the whole narrative of cultural appropriation was like one of the first a few years ago well you're not allowed to like practice yoga and i'm like you know so many of these teachers they were directed by their teachers to come to the west you know a lot of them happened in the 60s time right i grew up on an ashram right i was literally taught yoga by a yoga master who's pretty famous yeah you know, like I knew him as a as a, since I was born mm -hmm. and like so that was like a, that was one of the narratives which my funny theory is that it's all that sort of woke ideology is like Chinese bots just like it's like a consciousness distributed by a bot right. goes through social media and people are like my god you are appropriated and blah 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 and I'm like, you've never participated in any spiritual culture because all spiritual, like you've never met a Buddhist who is uh, black or white or, you know, like you think like, oh, all Buddhists are supposed to be Asian. And I'm like, well, go to like, what? Like, it's insane. Or even people saying that Christianity, it's like European. I'm like, it's actually a Mideastern religion. If anything, you could say Christianity went in and ripped through Europe and like took over and appropriated all of those ancient traditions. Right. But like, and then people can claim it. I can claim yoga. I was from birth, from a teacher, from a lineage. But that, so that was something that I noticed started really starting. So like, I literally have had people because of what I've shared saying that's just a ridiculous thought pattern and mindset, thank me and say they were like on the verge of giving up just the yoga, like doing some Hatha yoga, stretchy, nice breathing and eat well and be a little more mindful in your life because they were like insulting somebody's culture. And I, I was like, you're, you're, a, you're retarded. Totally retarded. It's like, do you eat rice? Do you eat pizza? 
I find the whole cultural appropriation conversation completely retarded. My go-to with it is like, if you don't have foreskin and you're a Jew, then just send me a check because that's cultural appropriation. Like if we're going to get really granular about this stupidity, we, we, how far do we take it? You know, you it's, I've seen it taken pretty far. I haven't got, I haven't like, I've had it. I saw like one post where someone tried to go after me, but I've, like you just you can't I grew up with it I don't I don't knock on wood I don't usually attract that and even like I utilize so much like Hebrew and the letters and all the mysticism and my last name is Donovan so sometimes people will be like are you Jewish or something I'm like yeah by like some cultural heritage Right. I utilize the mysteries of the letters and, and, and a lot of the Hebrew God names and things like that. But like, what I do notice in general is nobody that's Jewish gives a shit. No one gives a shit. I, I mean, the only time I've seen someone from a culture claiming cultural appropriation give a shit was when I was, I went to lightning in a bottle to give a talk and I was there early so they were blessing the land and they had um, a native gentleman, you know, who's I guess tribe was from the land, give a talk. And his talk was just like, don't put feathers in your hair. Don't do this cultural appropriation thing. You know, it's really damaging to our culture. And at the time I thought your culture is way more strong and powerful than some 20 something nitwit with a feather in her hair. Like, why would you give your power away to other people's ignorance, you know, just playing into that victim mentality that I don't see doing anyone any good. Yeah, I, I almost find that surprising because every time I've encountered, like I have these cutters on that would be Sikh. Anytime like I encounter like India, Indians, like um, they love it. They're like, oh my God. And then I was like getting takeout. I was actually finishing my numerology book i like rented a weird airbnb in oxnard because nice. there's like nothing there's just like nothing in oxnard i mean you yeah. could go look at the beach in the morning but i was like there's i just i'm gonna like stay in this weird place i was like in a suburban lot and i was like i gotta get takeout i went to the indian restaurant and they were all sikh and they saw that i was wearing these and they came out and they like gave me chai and they were hanging out like it was a huge they loved it like they right. loved that I had an interest and had knowledge and that they were given to me as gifts. And like, it, it's a weird, again, it's that, that weird, like some fucking demon that like takes over as a thought form to keep you away from some higher evolution or something better for yourself. People yeah. really fall for it and then they get angry, you know? And then they're dedicating their lives to telling you what you can and can't do. Like go to a country when I was in, when I went to Egypt, right before all the COVID stuff started, they, we, I went to, I was giving a talk. We were going to do yoga in this function room in this hotel, very like Western geared hotel. Everybody speaks perfect English. They don't even have accents. And um, we had to stop. Like we, we weren't allowed. Like we weren't allowed to chant. We weren't allowed to do yoga. I'm like, for all you people, especially in America, that are going on and trying to tell people what they can and can't do. Um, even if it's, even if it is disrespectful, like even if I stuck a feather in my dick or something and had a fucking sweat lodge, like that's probably a shitty and that's disrespectful, but like go to places where you literally could be arrested, where you're literally told you're not allowed to practice your spiritual faith. Like people have no perspective. They have no historical perspective. No, they have no clue. And I feel like, I mean, for me, my most fundamental religious precept, if, if I have any, is right use of will. So to tell someone else to not do something so that we don't get offended is absolute wrong use of will. You can remove yourself from my presence if you think I'm offending you or turn your back or even better yet, like go look at those triggers and heal them so that you have a thicker skin. Yeah, exactly. I, it's a weird, it's a weird bully mindset too. And I mean, I feel pretty blessed. Like I don't like sometimes even on our podcast, like Gina will get nervous or whatever. And I don't, I don't think I say anything crazy. 
And um, because it's still like, there's still conditioning like, oh no, who are we going to offend? You know, there's just sensitivity where you watch a show and it's like, warning, there's cigarette smoking and flashing lights. You might get a seizure and want cigarettes. <laughs> I have like a funny theory of like, the kids nowadays seem so fucked up to me. And like, I'm like, what happened to just like, try, try smoking for like, you know, a couple years and do some art. Maybe it's bad. Try to start a band and you can suck and no big deal. And then it's a phase. Totally. It's why I love hop keto, which I've been taking for the past several months, because it's like we touch each other without consent. We're throwing each other around. It's like the old days. <laughs> Is that a martial art? Yes, it's um, Korean self-defense. And it's really like oh, wow. kind of dirty fighting. So it's okay. not it's not like the swan flies over the lake. It's like go for the jugular, rip the eyes out. Um. See, that's what I should have taken this Tai Chi stuff was like the swan is over the lake and the crouching tiger, yeah. you know, is a ballerina. <laughs> like, I mean, Tai Chi, like I totally get, like, I mean, I absolutely respect it. Like sometimes you got to just try things and be like, yeah, you know, whatever, not my thing, no harm done. I still learned something, but yeah, I definitely like punch a motherfucker in the throat. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. I mean, I had been I've been doing ballet since I was like three. And I've been doing ballet here in New Mexico at the same school for 12 years, same teacher, same people. But um, when we opened back up, I was the only one in class without a mask. And after a couple months, it just hit me. I'm like, this sucks. I'm treated like shit. Everyone ignores me. I hate this. I'm done with ballet. Um, and just, I just like wanted something really disciplined, really hard and feel like it's smart for me to know how to defend myself. So that's my new thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that sounds cool. You know, now that you mention it though, I'm like, oh yeah, you do look like a dancer. Like dancers, there's always like a certain vibe and structure. And I, I mean that in a very good, a very positive way. I mean, that sucks though. I mean, it's fun to try something new. It kind of sucks like if you don't feel as like, welcome or whatever it, sucks, seems like it, that. it was a breakthrough for me because i realized like november december were really great months for me because it was just like a lot of things came to light and i was in the middle of class and i just realized no one has said hello to me no one has acknowledged my existence this isn't the first time this happened i hate it and i just like i didn't say anything i didn't growl i just grabbed my stuff and walked out in the middle and was like i deserve better yeah, New Mexico seems, my perspective, it seems like they really fell for everything. Pretty hook, line, and finger. Maybe not in the, like, rural parts, but I remember driving through, um, like, well, Albuquerque, and then a little bit outside of Santa Fe, but then stopping, like, you know, whatever, cool third-wave coffee places, um, and everyone was, like, still afraid, and we were sort of, I thought, over it, and then... I was like, man, there's a weird energy that like New Mexico is maybe my favorite place. Like literally the land of enchantment. I was like, whoever came up with that marketing, it's like, they're right. Totally. Like, it's a magic that the land, I don't, it's, it's amazing. There's a peace that I feel there, like no, no place else or like very few places. So that was sort of a bummer. It was actually on our list of places to maybe live. It's frustrating because it seems like Santa Fe is very liberal and it seems to be the worst here outside of Santa Fe. No one cares. The south side of Santa Fe, no one cares. But Santa Fe, you got to remember northern New Mexico, we have the labs here. We have okay. you know, the UFO shit. We have Santa Fe Institute, which is, you know, the hub of all the psyops here. Oh, I, OK, I'll have to go down some search some rabbit holes on that. Yeah. So there's so much going on here. I mean, last night, my girlfriend and I went to a music show and this guy came out to introduce the bands and he's wearing a mask. And we're both like, seriously, like in March of 2023. And then he came out between bands and his mask wasn't on. And my friend's like, what happened? I'm like, I think we just jumped timelines. <laughs> you know what? Like, it's fun to like spoof on that, but that's probably what happened. Like I'm in a timeline right now where every little thing just gets that much more expensive and unprofessional and then doesn't work. I think and we're all I'm like, timeline. <laughs> all right, I'm, I gotta, I'm like trying to snap out of that. I was like, 
I feel like there used to be a world in which things were professionally done <laughs> and people at least out of like some care for their job because they're earning a living at least would do their best to do the right thing. And now I'm like always just forwarded to like basically a bot or like, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Like managers don't exist. Um, but that you probably did. I It's weird because even the main, like the, biggest mainstream you know the fucking paper of records and all of that shit is now like oh maybe natural immunity is valid maybe mass at the new york times literally put a, a whole it, it was actually a well done article i don't know if you had a chance to read it but just like how the mass didn't work and no. then gina had posted it my People I knew were posting, and of course, somebody that works in a hospital. It's like, well, you know, I think if you ever went to get surgery, you'd want. I'm like, well, you're not walking around with your body cut open in a very like unique and maybe once in a lifetime for a lot of people, if that, where you're literally getting your body cut open, and it's probably not about COVID at that point. It's about like you don't want somebody sneezing inside your body. Exactly, exactly. You know, or like a mustache hair or whatever the case is, or they don't want to bring in your body fluid. Like, that's a very sensitive environment. But like the whole article got into like, you know, taking it off, like wearing it at the host stand, then taking it off at the table. And just this whole charade of insanity that people are angry to and ready to enforce with like, you know, the vigor of, of Mars, you yeah. know? I mean, like, I, think, I think it's a direct result of people not having purpose, right? So now all of a sudden they have a purpose, they have a mission, they have something to focus on. In the same way, I think this like um, like disintegration of customer service, I think that's definitely a planned part of the op. And it's to like get us used to, well, you don't get help. So when the robots come in or everything self check out, check out, you don't notice. And then we have all these demoralized younger generations who've been indoctrinated, you know, through common core curriculum and higher education who have no work ethic whatsoever. They're, they don't understand the, the self-fulfillment of, of a job well done. And I think it's all to just kind of get us used to living in a shitty communist techno Yeah, so we way. could be like genderless iPads. You know, yeah. there's a there's a chapter, there's a practice, and this was handed down. And it's a magical practice that I put in here. And I've mentioned it a few times, but one is to do everything with excellence. And it's a little chapter. And that is a hermetic magical teaching. Like, just do, just go in and do your best. Even if the job sucks and you're making no money, like just, you still agreed to take that job. Like this is, you know, nobody's pointing a gun to your head to like work at a store or whatever, or customer service. Um, and just do it because that creates a whole different energy and it just opens up so much more. But I think too, I really like the way you put that. And it's interesting because my teacher, like early nineties, when you just started to have some automated answering things, like you're trying to call about your, like your AT&T phone bill and your landline right. and please hold press three. That was like kind of new. Right. And the, the, all the like intuitive and sort of prophecy predictions were laid out to me then that this is, is exactly what you said. This is a slow roll set up to make people disconnected. And then eventually you go through a generation or two, which we're close to now, where that's all they're used to. And so you're just used to ordering everything. Every right. interactions on a phone or an iPad. Right. I mean, there's even a coffee shop, Bluestone Lane in LA, that you can only order on the big iPad there. There's a person at the counter, and then you have to order. And then I can't say like I sometimes I like a uh, ten out a cappuccino, a quad cappuccino, but I like the total thing with milk to be ten ounces. Yep. Right. So most cups are twelve ounces. There's eight ounces. So I'm like, well, you take the 12 ounce and just, but there's no way to communicate that. No, because and, they don't want any special, they want you homogenized. You don't have choices beyond these narrow choices. 
it's so that play i was like oh here we go and now we just have people more and more disconnected i'm not even saying of course the human connection there's a part of me that does like and i feel like all hotels should just have an ipad where you order room service like like that but sometimes but like and i fall into the convenience but it that it all started the prophecy it starts with those automated customer service and then we're just so used to you get a shit product and like you can barely return something you can never get like help from a human but the fact that you can go in in person in this place in la while there's people at the counter you can't order from it like you can't do a little tweak you know like it i would like, buy nothing okay. there i would buy nothing and i would throw a tantrum and make a scene <laughs> Yeah, the only reason I bought it, it was like literally, I was like waiting. I think I was getting my car. I was like at the car dealer and it was like the place that I could walk to and I really wanted coffee. And I was like, but I usually, I won't support so many things or if I'll see that even, well, from even a lot of like for the last couple of years, if you had to like, you know, put on a mask and stuff like that, I, I just don't, I'm like, there's so many other options and places to spend my money and I don't make like a scene about it. Um, but yeah, I just think you put that so well, it's just more and more disconnect. And it's same with the self checkouts. Like I won't do the self checkouts and I make a point if I go to any store that has it to call the manager over and let <laughs> them know, like, please tell your higher ups. I'm, that you know this is why i won't shop here and also please know this is going to put you out of a job like i'm vocal about it and i'm not like i don't have to be a jerk about it but i want them to know that they're losing me and they're losing money because of these choices i think yeah i think the self checkout they should just have the customers like mop up the floors too because they always like bill what? it they bill it like we're actually saving you money Right. So because you because whatever they hire less people and that's we just do their job for self checkout. But I've heard I've seen that that that's the narrative about it. Now they don't even have to do that. Just people are so used to it. Right. Um, and I'm like, then we should like we should stock the shelves. We should mop the floors. We should do the inventory. So right. like we could really bring the uh, prices down. You know, they're not bringing any prices down of like no the six. Down the six cashiers probably at the end of the day aren't probably made like a big supermarket chain. And to top it off, whatever you do with that, I, I always get stuck behind someone who has like never used a computer before. I'm like, how did you just decide this is like, is this their first time? And then they brought like a, uh, like a paper bag of coins. <laughs> that <they're paying> <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, I like succumb to it because I'm, I'm in a rush. I'll just, I got like two things. I'll be like, beep, beep. Right. And um, that's a lesson though. There's a magical teaching. The dark side will use convenience and curiosity and not like healthy curiosity, meaning interest. But when you want to go to some weird dark places, yeah. um, but convenience is a big one that always sticks in my, in my mind because there's a lot of things I would like to boycott. Some, it's just, it's inevitable. We got to have to play the game, in my opinion. Like, right. but there's too many things and I catch myself. It's just so convenient. I catch myself doing the same. It's the hook is, is our comfort, our affluence, convenience. And also, I think it's our independence of like being so American that we all want to do whatever the fuck we want to do. So, you know. I know a lot of people who, you know, flew during lockdown and were willing to wear masks, even though they knew it was bullshit because they wanted to do what they wanted to do. And it was like, if we didn't do that, we could have shut this down. But everyone just wants, you know, we're such pleasure seeking beings. Everybody wants their thing. And then living in L.A. where you had to show like proof of stupidity everywhere, like we left right as that got passed but we we were fighting tooth and nail but there's only so much we could do and it's like let's call our city representatives the one that we were trying to talk to and her, one of her aides was like well if you don't like it you can just leave i'm like you really like you we've lived in the city 
like my girlfriend, her entire, I mean, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, but she's lived in LA her entire adult life. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's, she's worked in film, but you didn't just move and like get those big jobs. Right. And we happen to be lucky enough where we could go anywhere and that's pre COVID except for one of her jobs, but she still created her own freelance, but like, really that's your mentality. Now that same woman got like kicked off council. I forgot her name for like being a racist. And then, um, and now like even the MSNBC, the most like vile of indoctrination news sources, um, they're literally saying natural immunity is just as good. So uh, like, I I feel like in a way we were displaced because that was our home. We were going to have our child there. There is higher things at play. And I feel like being in Vermont is where we're supposed to be now. But I look back and I'm still resentful. Um, and now and then it's like they're literally telling us well if you don't like it you can leave I'm like you're not like just because I literally reposted her on Instagram and I said just because like you made bad health choices and you're like a fat stupid c-word I put this on Instagram I tagged her I think I have more followers than she did does and I said, just because you choose to eat like Doritos and Pop-Tarts and seed oils and just be like a fucking fat bitch and like you're probably at risk, uh, that's not my problem. And you're making it my problem now and telling me what I can and can't do and make the med- in very informed medical yeah. choices. Being around, my friends are doctors. Right. I have allopath- like regular medicine, allopathic doctors. I know a ton of naturopaths and not just like in passing or I'm their patient. Like these are my close friends. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it's, you know, so you can eat all the pop tarts you want, man. But like, be just because you're at risk, like it's the insanity. So we had to get that. We just were like, I'm not going to live like this. So on principle, my wife and I were defiant which is what you're saying is like too many people aren't defiant and they're just like, well, I want to, well, I, w- I want to get a slice of pizza. Right. I mean, it's fuck your pizza. I, you know, again, I come back to right use of will. Anyone can handle this the way they want to handle it. It's not my place to tell them how to, but everyone I know who has their fake stupidity cards are allowing this nonsense to continue instead of if we all just said no fuck you we're taking our money elsewhere this would have been shut down so much easier easier but i think that la i mean i know that la i was also born and raised in la it's an epicenter of this fuckery and when i came back to la from new mexico in 2015 i didn't even recognize it from when i had left in 2011 it had become so douchey and so crowded and so expensive And then in 2019, you know, I used to live up in the Hollywood Hills and always go up to do like witchy magic and prayers and whatnot. And I was up there and Los Angeles said, we love you and you've done all you can and we're going to hell and you need to leave right now because it's going to get really bad here. And then I did a big, I did a 10 gram mushroom ceremony in November um, because I was having some physical stuff. And the whole ceremony was about all of the black magic and Masonic and Illuminati bullshit that is Los Angeles. And it was just showing me these grid lines and geography and how that whole place has been co-opted for such a long time. It's sad because, I mean, there is so much light there. I think the only way it survived is because there is like a lot of very strong light forces and big things and then those communities is, since 2020 have been ripped through those are the attacks on people like Guru Jugget and Rama and just like get a fucking life um there were so many mega hitter fucking Madame Blavatsky like a real like legit occultist she had an ashram there in the 19 like 20s I think early 1900s Alistair Crowley uh started a lodge there and then that went haywire and then that jack parsons who like was that there's like some cheesy show they want to show all things crowley it's like everyone's just boning doing sex magic i'm like 
<laughs> unfortunately, in my opinion, when I got, I was like, unfortunately, it's, none of that's happening. But um, but everyone like, was there. You had Yogananda. You had Krishna Yogananda Ray. came. You have L. Ron mm -hmm. Hubbard taking over the Masonic Lodge on Franklin. I mean, but they were all well, there. He Crowley, Alistair, well, Crowley, I know, but I just Americanize it. So if any, if you, if you have any, there's so many like staunch, like Crowleyites, they're like metalheads. They're so, they're basically woke because they have rigid rules. Right. But um, it, it's, uh, he, the guy, Jack Parsons, who is pretty famous. I do have one of his books, the like two-edged sword, but um you know, he was worked at like the jet propulsion laboratories and this whole thing started in Pasadena and then he like blew himself up. And right. there's like a little subculture around that in Kenneth Anger, but uh, he was one of Crowley's students, Jack Parsons, and had, that was the their lodge in Pasadena. He was like, Crowley's like, look, this uh, L. Ron Hubbard is just a fucking charlatan and you need to stay clear. And it was, he started all of that in their yacht business. So they were like buying yachts and selling them. He stole $50,000. So like Jack Parsons just didn't listen to his teacher. And it all went like haywire. But you have these high energy beings. And I met this like nutty guy who did have a very dedicated meditation practice. He seemed like on the, just on the cusp of being homeless. Mm -hmm. He's been in LA forever, but sometimes people like that, he came up to me, he's like, you know, like thousands of years ago, LA, people were flying around in like special spaceships. And he said, the reason everybody's drawn here is because of the fall. And, and like, you're on the edge of death every day. He said, that's why it's so creative. And he said, there's always been so much light here, but there's a lot of darkness now. It's both. It's hand in hand. I mean, in that journey I did, it was also showing me places of high magic, literally like six inches next to a completely co-opted space. But that, you know, the Scientology Center that's there now, which is a giant blue building, that used to be Cedars of Lebanon Hospital, which was accused of a lot of um, organ harvesting. But Cedars of Lebanon is the 34th degree in masonry that used to be called the Blue Lodge. And now okay. it's this big blue. I know the building. Hover. Yeah. So, I mean, there's LA is just a weird place. It has the brightest light, the darkest dark. I think because of the fault lines, it sends all of us into the upper chakras because we can't have faith in the ground beneath our feet. So we have to go to the higher realms to find our center because you can't really ground in Los Angeles. No, I, my experience too, and I noticed that like right when I got there, I was like, the veil is thinner, the, the, the magic is faster. Like anything I said or where I put my energy and projection, it's been happened fast. And I, I learned right away that like, there's something so powerful here. If you just surrender and choose to love it, she, at least at that time, and I moved there right when you left the first time, like she will love you. And I went through my trials and tribulations, like big, devastating breakup. No, much, like I definitely got crushed, but I got crushed at the same time that everything kept working out perfectly. Mm. I was like, this is, this is absolutely where I'm supposed to be. I, I never thought like what I would put my energy in projection, things just happened. And it was a city that supported me. Like, I felt like I had friends everywhere and such good community. It's like, it saddens me to see it get so ripped apart. Or I'm angry at the people that, were, nobody in Hollywood's like, everybody is like fake. You think any of these big, like A-list celebrities, none of them are fucking vaccinated in my experience. And everyone just has a fake card. Oh, interesting. And they're just like, but it's what you said. Oh, well, I'll just show the fake card. I'm like, yeah, it's that's just, no, they don't want to hassle. They don't want to not be able to do the thing. It's just, again, the convenience. Yeah, it's all goes back to convenience. I mean, I don't know that for sure. There are people that I know, so I can't speak for everybody. But my experience is everyone at that high level is so health, micromanaging, health obsessed. 
with right. like natural way. I don't know anybody who even goes to a doctor in LA. Everyone goes to some high advanced like healer. Totally. Some of it to anywhere else, people would be like, that seems crazy. But then you go and get some wild ozone treatment and this and that. And you're like, oh, I'm, fi I'm fine. Right. <laughs> you know, so there's there's definitely advanced things like that happening. Probably even stuff out of my budget. Um, and, but they're just, you're making it go on. Yeah. I mean, there's so many, there's different things at play, you know, and the A-list celebrities are playing a totally different game. Yeah. That's a whole other level of maneuvering and then where of influence, but also where are you being influenced? Like I used to be kind of dismissive of these notions of like, yeah, does do these dark energies utilize a lot of sort of Hollywood and just sort of, I, I always thought of it as just peeping into coming into people's like psyches and then they manifest it through all this weird and dark art sometimes. But now I'm like, it's just so, it's either so obvious that they're just trying to be campy, like the band Motley Crue, they're like, or like, like shock rockers, but I'm like, this is the Grammys. Right. Or it's just like, no, we can now, we can just be so obvious about everything. Right. Um, like I knew someone who did the set as the art department for one of these, I'm not going to mention it, the name, but let's just say it's one of the most famous people that did a Super Bowl uh, halftime show a number of years ago. It's like legendary, like conspiracy theory that it's like all Illuminati stuff. And right. I'm like, you know what? I actually know this, the art, the lead art department, the person who did all that stylist for this mega star. And, um, but after a while, even the person who did all the art, she was like, wait, maybe I was like, she was starting to question that maybe she was like somehow like brainwashed on some level to go in these weird directions. Because she's like a very sweet person. I mean, yeah, like rock and roll. Like there's a difference between like, I like rock and roll. I'm a little goth. I like some imagery that maybe looks a little dark, but it's just more of a style. Right. You know, um, but that, because I was like so dismissive. Like I know people who do this. And then when she literally was like, I don't know now. Sometimes I question it. It's you know. so it's so insidious the way that influence can seep in and make it seem like these things are our own ideas. You know, if she's in a meeting and someone, you know, very subtly suggests, who knows, like a black and white checkered Masonic floor thing, and it's just in the context of some sort of like artistic brainstorming riffing, you know, that could have landed and she doesn't know how it landed. I used to date a big time rock star in LA and I'm not going to say his name, but he was talking about how the black magic and the witchcraft was super rampant. And he was bitter because it had linked him to his audience in this quantum entanglement, because initially it was what put him on the map. And he was kind of tortured in that there was no way out of that entanglement for him in this lifetime because it hooked him in with his fans in this way where they weren't, and his music is great, don't get me wrong, but because I guess some sort of dark magic was used to hook the fans in, there was like a stuckness for him in that. Yeah, that makes, I mean, it's interesting that he was like very conscious and he didn't really want to do it. Um, you can watch some bands they're definitely doing mudras also some concerts like I've gone to shows I don't go to really any shows now but especially if a kid and I live in the middle of fucking nowhere I'm not that far from New York if I really but um, like sometimes I'll go to a show and I'm super energized and charged afterwards and then some people put on performances where I'm just drained like I don't even drink and I feel like I'm hung over and I'm like watching Mick Jagger is a good example. And I personally, I love the Rolling Stones. Like I love their music. They're in one of my top favorite bands. Um, but uh, even my old teacher was like, watch how, watch the moves. They're like, there's a dark magic that they're doing. There's a reason that they have sustained as, you know, arguably the biggest rock band of all time. They're all in the top, whether we know who the biggest bands are, but, um, and, 
you know, they were, he was married to, uh, what's her name, Bianca Jagger, where everyone literally was like, she's like a Colombian, like, satanic priestess. Right, right. Um, who I've met, I've delivered room service to her. Did I, wait, we didn't talk about this, did we? No, but could you feel like a satanic priestess energy coming off of her? Well, I mean, I was aware of this. Uh, I certainly was just guarded and I was very professional. And this was like this very expensive high-end place. You know, I was young, I was like early 20s. Um, she definitely has like a thing. Mm-hmm. And she has a vibe, yeah. right? Like you're not going to be, but you're going to be like more enchanted. Yeah. And I found it interesting. She was like super strict, like vegetarian, mm-hmm. which I was like, that feels like a, a weird shtick. But here's what happens. I was on the room service detail that morning. This is a super small hotel, small luxury hotel. It's like, you know, it was, it's one of the top. I've waited on heads of state, Margaret Thatcher, Paul Newman. and um she calls down to complain that I get this message to her like did you bring the room service to her like early like I hadn't even delivered it and I was like no it's not set for like whatever till nine o'clock or whatever the case is and uh she was already complaining that there was like an entity like in the room or she thought someone had walked in and come into her room but I was like you know what in a weird way because I mean, I was already deep in practicing all the hermetic magic and stuff, which is not about trying to control anybody's will, but I felt like there was something possibly connected to me, something more beneficent, Mm -hmm. or why is this happening now? She's here, I'm on room service detail. And then I got like called into the office, like, did you, because everything had to be very precise. Like if someone wanted their coffee at 8.30, we brought it at 8.30, it was like the military. And I was like, no, but I thought that was like really interesting, sort of funny to me. And I felt like she was honestly probably picking up on the energies that I was connected to, which would probably be on the opposite spectrum of what she wanted to tinker with. Oh, that's really interesting. And she was dating Pete DuPont, who was like the, wasn't he like the governor of Delaware? That whole DuPont family, DuPont chemical family, they like own a lot of, I think it's Delaware. I don't know. It was for the Rep- the National Review, which is like okay. the big, you know, hardline, like conservative. Um, back when I used to think, back whenever the evil current took those people over, right. now it's just like moved to, to a new place. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, I noticed it when I, I've never, the Hollywood Bowl has always felt a little off to me. Like I, I always prefer, um, the one in Los Feliz. Oh, the, uh, the, was that the, not the, was that the Greek, Greek. the smaller outdoor? Yeah, that's a I great. The, yeah, the Greek feels so good to me. The Hollywood Bowl always feels weird. And there's that big cross off in the distance and just general Hollywood and Highland feels like such a hub of really dark, nefarious energy. That whole area sketches me out. I won't even, go, I mean, after they opened the whole Hollywood Highland thing, like I wouldn't go there. I was just like, no. I went to a couple events there, always got lost, always felt weird. There's just a real darkness there. But I saw Beck in concert on his Colors tour at um, the Hollywood Bowl. And there was this moment where he has the whole crowd singing, I'm a loser baby, so why don't you kill me? And I was like, this is fucking black magic. Like you couldn't pay me to say these words out loud, but let alone having like tens of thousands of people repeat them over and over and over again. And I was just aware of like how damaging that was for everyone there, but you know, under the guise of like folly and celebration because these song lyrics are straight up curses. 